questions to raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Quick question. Well, we made it a little more than it probably needed to be. So, Coach Tanner's been complaining about concessions. So, I figured we'd keep some people around in the game. But uh, really proud of our football team. That uh, you know, we the last two weeks, Vanderbilt game and Georgia game, two very physical games. Uh, we had a bunch of guys that took very sp sparingly reps throughout the week, and and go out there. And DJ Smith wasn't able to go in pregame, and Dante Sawyer was limping on one leg. And I mean, we're, but we're like everybody else in the country right now. We're really beat up, especially on the defensive side of the ball. But I thought we moved the ball extremely well. We stayed balanced, exactly what we want to do. Uh, ran the ball extremely well. Uh, you know, Jake will have a couple of throws. We had a, a, a miscommunication coming off the goal line on the ball there, and then uh, got to got to take a sack or throw the ball away on the one wheel right on our sideline. You can't throw a pick in that situation, and then the ball in the end zone. I don't think he saw the safety. You can ask him, but the guy made a heck of a play. Chauncey came out of the top and intercepted the ball, but much better on third down defensively. I thought we stopped the run other than two runs on the power play off the. Uh, uh, nub side on the back side. I thought we played the runs pretty well uh, for the most part. Uh, but, but our guys continued to fight and play hard in the game and, and uh, made the plays when we needed to make the plays. A huge interception there at the end. And give Florida credit. Those kids have been through an awful lot. You know, it's a very difficult thing to go through and what those young men are facing. And I hate it for those guys. Uh, but they got a bunch of good kids in that locker room. It's a tough situation that they're going through right now. Uh, I told our football team all week that this team's going to come out and fight and play hard. I know those guys. And uh, so they represented Florida extremely well today. And I'll open it up for any questions. Will, uh, how are Shy Smith and Tyson Williams? Uh, Shy, it was not a hit. I think was poked in the eye and had blurry, blurry vision in the eye. Uh, there was not a hit. It was no, there was no contact. And he had a hard time getting focused, so they couldn't get him back in. And Tyson's fine. AJ was running extremely well. Mon was playing extremely well. And uh, certainly, I, I just talked to Tyson in the locker room. He's good. And, and uh, certainly, we're going to need him moving forward. With DJ, was it uh, the hip again? Yeah, he's got a hip, and you know, he was a, he's got took a pretty good shot in the Georgia game, and and uh, he just limited. He got out there in pregame. He tried, moved around a little bit, and moved around throughout the week. Practiced a little bit Thursday, uh, but you know, again, uh, we just didn't feel like he was full speed enough to play. Stephen Montek did a nice job. Javon Charleston did a nice job. Well, is it safe to say this is the most balanced this team has been all year on offense? Uh, I would this against game? against a good defense. I mean, at the end of the day, I know they've had their share of injuries, but those, uh, you know, CC Jefferson and Taven Bryan and um, you know Zaninga, those guys, they got good football players. And uh, but I was extremely pleased with how we were able to run the football, move the football, and something we've done all year is take care of the ball. You know, we just got to take care of it a little bit better, and make some better decisions. But uh, we certainly will work on that moving forward. Yeah. What was the d difference uh, defensively on third down for you guys today? Well, I think that you know they weren't they went to a lot of seven man protections, but you know I thought T. Rob and the defensive staff did a really good job of creating some one on ones. We won in some one on ones. We flushed uh, Malik early in the game. You know we had him on the perimeter a lot, and then uh, you know the you know Felipe. You know I felt like we got good pressure on him. He's got a tremendous arm talent. You saw there at the end, and you know that's just a poor decision by our players. I mean we're in man coverage. We got him flushed. We got exactly what we wanted. It was a third and five situation. He wanted to run the jerk route to the boundary, and they kept running their routes downfield. And our guys came out. Of coverage when the quarterback hadn't crossed the line, you can't come out of coverage, and our guys know better than that. We'll do a better job of coaching, that's on me. But uh, that situation uh, should not have happened, Coach. Talk about how you thought the team competed today in the trenches. Well, I thought we've competed extremely well. You know, you take, take away two runs that they had one on our sideline and one for the touchdown right before halftime. That's really in the run game, and the one quarterback counter on their sideline for about 30 yards. I don't know exactly what the, what the uh, rush was, that was for 23 yards. But uh, you take those three runs, the, the running game was non-existent. And then for us to be able to stay balanced and run the ball to help us in the throwing game is, is huge. Well, a lot of SEC teams have had you know, well-documented adversity this year. You guys have had injuries and so forth, too. What, what's been the key to you guys managing your own adversity this year and keep plugging along? I think it's the culture within our program from a standpoint of something that we preach about every day, man down, man up, so what, now what mentality, whether you've done something very good and successful, and it doesn't matter. It matters about the next snap. It matters about the next day, the next hour, the next minute, and, uh, or, or you've faced great adversity. Uh, you, you move to the next thing, and we have a so what, now what mentality, and, and that's part of uh, you know, 
who we are and, and, and what we are moving forward. And don't let external circumstances that you – things you have no control over, including injuries, affect who you are and how you play. That's true in life. And, and you know, to me, you know, you, you talk about progress. This football team was 3-9 and nine two years ago. 3-9. and nine. And, and I just complimented them in the locker room. You talk about investing in what – you need to do to be successful, to buying into a new coaching staff, to buy into a different way of maybe doing things. And, and I'm really proud of this football team and how that they've invested in us and invested in themselves and in, in each other. Because there's a lot of progress being made. Now, let's don't, we're not happy with where we are, so don't, under, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. We have a lot more out there for us moving forward, uh, but I'm very proud of the progress we've been able to make. Taylor had five quarterback hurries, and he was a guy that you didn't know was going to play throughout the week. Just what did you see out of him and your defensive line as a whole probably getting to the quarterback and rushing up field? Well, I think that, you know, again, we, we felt good about our matchups up front. Taylor's have got some really good in-line quickness. He's a very strong guy. He's a powerful young man. And uh, we feel very good if he's going to be in a one-on-one -on -one that we can win. And, again, you credit Coach Thompson and Coach Robinson, those guys, for creating some one-on-ones for him. You know, Dennis Warnham seemed to get back there a bunch. He seems like he always does, but he, he got good pressure on the quarterback. I saw Dante back there. You saw Javon Kinlaw run out there on a, on a flare pass from inside out at 300 pounds. And that's, that's when you talk about effort and you talk about wild plays, that's, that's what we're talking about. And, and the, the, big, the big man can run. Uh, Coach, especially in that first quarter, sloppy football by Bowlville, both teams uh, early on. Did you say anything to the guys to kind of settle them down or anything at halftime to kind of just like, hey, you know, let's, let's just Well, just very down. uncharacteristic throw. I mean, the miscommunication, I'll be honest, I'm not sure the receiver or Jake, I got to get more of what happened there. It was a sudden change situation where we thought until we, we uh, stripped them on the goal line there. You know, the punt return situation was just an, uh, an unfortunate deal. We got blocked into it, and, and we hit it. There's no doubt about it. It was a turnover. Um, and, you know, just one of those things that you it's, it's, you got to play through, and our guys played through. We held them to a field goal in that situation uh, after the quick screen that hit for about, I don't know, I would say probably 23, I guess. 23 is a magic number today. But – we uh, held them to a field goal in that situation, so that's what you got to be able to do. You got to keep playing, and uh, I've, I felt like that. You know, we were getting a good surge offensively. I felt good about our matchups outside, and Jake being able to throw the football consistently well throughout the game, and uh, just keep playing the game. So, when clinch is a winning season, and, and you finish five and three in the SEC play. How important is that, especially for recruiting and just the general image of the program? Well, I go back to progress. And, you know, you've the best records we had since, since 2013 in the SEC. Uh, you know, that's what I'm – when you talk in terms of progress, you've got to be able to show recruits. You also need to be able to show your team. You know, the, as hard as we work, as, as much time and effort that they put into what we do and how we do it, you've got to be able to point to certain things and say, this is, this is why you're working. These are why you're doing these things. This is understand why these things are happening and positive thing, and you've got to have positive reinforcements. You know, that's just part of, you know, where we are. Will. Will, how did you manage, Jake, through the three picks, and how much did you, if at all, tailor your play calling differently after the third pick and maybe move more conservatively with the run? Well, we did. We honed it in a little bit. That was something, a conversation we had on that, just to calm him down. You know, at the end of the day, he's an outstanding football player, and I'm glad he's our quarterback, and nobody competes harder on our team. Uh, but at the end of the day, we, we got to hone it back in a little bit and, and try and run the ball a little bit. We missed on uh, missed Haven on the, on the uh, power play on the first and 10. He smacked us in the backfield, and we missed 11 off the edge in the next play. We felt like it was two well-protected runs that we would be able to run. We hit A.J. on the power play the series before, I think, for 34-something yards. So, again, you know, we – we needed to dial it in a little bit, but you know the game was on the line. We're, I'm glad Jake's our quarterback. I guess you had a similar sort of experience last year down in Gainesville, but what it mean to you to embrace all your former, some of your former players, guys you recruited? Oh, no, you, you, know, you, you know you can't put up you know the relationships you have with players, so it's important to me. It seemed like y'all had uh, a lot more success than usual with inside runs, especially with Mon. Is, was there anything to that this week? Is there anything to, to Mon getting the getting yards between the tackles? Well, I think you know sometimes it doesn't look pretty, but an inside zone that's able to crease a defense uh, can hit for a big big gainers, and we had several today that hit for big gainers. But also the power play was 
was a, a you know a very successful force. They were getting CC as a nine technique outside, and we were able to win the C gap a bunch in, in the game on the power play. So I think they complemented each other. We ran Chuck. We had a, a run check set up several times at the line of scrimmage based on the front, and I thought our guys did a nice job. Uh, without DJ in there, just how much did you get from your safeties group and, and Jam uh, being able to go to safety and let Chris play some nickel? Well, you know, we're able to rotate based on matchups for that situation, and Jam does a really nice job. And the guy's a true freshman as well, you know, mature beyond his years as far as how he handles the situation. But Chris does a really nice job of, of directing traffic, and Steven Montag can play every position probably in our defense. He's extremely bright and intelligent. And, uh, you know, to be able to have a guy like that is really a luxury for you as a coach. Well, you mentioned Mon there, um, a season high for him and for AJ as well mm -hmm. for the team. Four touchdowns on the ground. What did you see from the rushing attack today? Well, again, I thought they we had some extremely well blocked plays. I also thought that those both of those guys ran extremely hard. I think you know we 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 count bull yardage and yards after contact, and I think we had a bunch today. I don't know, but very proud of both of those young men. They continue to. You know, and again, both those guys are on our kickoff team. They're on a kickoff for time. I mean, they do everything. I mean, they're on the field all the time. Our best players play everything. And uh, that's where you gain an advantage. And I certainly feel like we gained an advantage other than the turnover in special teams today. And some, uh, Chris had a really nice punt return. It was another, you know, hidden yardage of about 35 yards maybe. So, so that was good. You mentioned explosive plays a lot. What's your goal for explosive plays on the ground? On the ground, well, we just say eight overall. So if the team's really selling out to stop the run and you hit eight explosives in the passing game, then that's good. Uh, but we say eight overall. And explosive plays are 20 plus? 20 plus pass, 10 plus run. Okay. You're moving the chains on a, you know, you look at it and, and a lot of offensive coaches disagree with me, which that's fine. But um, in a run, if you hit a 10 yard run, you're moving the chains. You know, you can throw a dig on the backside, an in route, and complete it and defend it perfectly and gain 16 yards, which most offensive guys want to say 16 yards is an explosive play. To me, it's not because you can defend it perfectly, make a tackle after the guy catches the ball. It's not an explosive play. We played it right. There's nobody frustrated on defense. Let's play the next snap. Have you, have you in your career ever been part of uh, a sequence like the one that, that started with uh, Jake's pick, then it, then you guys get the fumble back, and then after you guys punt, you immediately kind of have those back-to-back -back turnovers again? Have you been part of a sequence sort of like that? Well, I was glad it worked that way as I was getting booed for not going for it on fourth and one. <laughs> you know? So it actually worked pretty good for us. Uh, we, we threw the pick coming back. But, you know, I, I don't know. It was a great effort by our guys. I don't know who got the, the strip on the goal. I think it was Zach Bailey maybe. I, I, I didn't see um, – who was it? Hayden Hurst. Okay. I saw Zach flash. I didn't know who it was. But, you know, again, that's another – a guy's not giving up on a play. And that's that's typical of our football team. We'll continue to play. And, uh, you know, then be able to get the momentum switch back and punt it and, and BP, you know, put one on the ground. So, uh, again, I'm proud of our football team. We've we showed tremendous resiliency this year. We've had a lot of adversity, but our guys continue to play, and uh, real proud of what they've done. Well, uh, the so what now what thing that you guys always say. I hear Alabama guys say that too. Did you get that from Nick? And what's the difference in saying that and actually really getting guys to buy in? Because I'm sure that kind of stuff said all over the place. No doubt. I mean, uh, you know, Dr. Kevin Elko is somebody that we use here uh, as far as some mental training as far as those things are concerned and self-talk and things that I think are really important to c creating a, you know, a psychological edge for your football team. And uh, he brought it to us, and that's something that our guys really have bought into. And I think that, you know, when you hear your players talking on the practice field and, and on the sideline and in different spots and you hear the, the constant language of so what, now what, and an every down dude and those sort of things, that's when you know you're reaching your football team. And there's no doubt that uh, our team has bought into that mantra. Well, I know after wins and even just after games in general, you know, even today, wife embraces you, comes over, gives you a hug. I don't know if you'll admit it, but do you think this was a special win for your family, though, considering the past with Florida a little bit? No, well, we enjoyed it. You know, it was good to see Jackson Wood on the field. And I want to thank our fan base. At 12 noon kickoff, I've been working a lot of places where half the stadium was full, regardless of your record. And uh, that place was packed, there's no doubt about it. And it was loud, and uh, we really appreciate our fans more than, than uh, we could ever thank them for, for, for the support that they have for our players. Last one goes to Ben. Um, what were you kind of seeing on the play where uh, 
uh, one of their defenders kind of got a hand on Jake in the end zone, and it seemed like he just kind of slung it, and uh, Hayden sort of pulled it. And what are you kind of seeing on that one? Well, I wish he wouldn't have thrown it. You know, in that situation, you don't throw the ball up in that situation and, you know, anticipate the edge pressure. They brought a sand bullet off the edge. We've got to be able to get the ball out quicker. Yeah. We'll let Coach go get some players in there. All right, thank you. Thank you.